Alright, I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Bahashem, Rekakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles, a great millstone. Salutations to the elect out there, wherever you may be. I want to do a quick lesson going into the, the topic of uh, regeneration. You see, regeneration is real. You see, when a person dies, their spirit goes back to the Most High, which is the Father of all spirits. Uh, you know what? Let me get that verse. Let's go get that verse right now. The Most High is also known as the Father of Spirits and the Father of Lights. Let's get that verse. Father of Spirits. <clears throat> All right. All right, Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us. We have earthly fathers. You know, you're born, you're born through the seed of a man, you know. And we gave them reverence, you know. We hold our fathers in high regard because those are the ones that begat us. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? You see that? See, the Most High is known as the Father of Spirits. All spirits are His. Like it says in the Scriptures, like He says in the Scriptures, all souls are mine. He's the Father of Spirits. Alright, let's go back. Alright, let's see. Let's start with the Scripture. 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject unto the prophets. You see that? So if you are a prophet and you're past life, you're going to come back in the lot of a prophet. You see, you're going to be a prophet in this life. Alright, let's uh, get some examples. Alright, remember this topic is I'm discussing uh, regeneration. Which, which is when a person dies, they come back <clears throat> in another body in their same lot. Let's see. Let's get a uh, let's get in the, the precept. All right, this is uh Matthew nineteen and twenty eight, and Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne in the, of his glory, ye shall also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes. You see. And obviously, all the, his disciples died. You know, over two over, what two thousand years ago. So they're gonna come back. The regeneration. Let's look at the term regeneration. Let's see. Regeneration. Let's scroll down. Let's see what, what's the definition. Regeneration. All right. Here we are. Let's get the uh Strong's G thirty eight twenty four. Polygenesia. 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 Alright. Let's scroll down. What does it say? New birth. You see, you're gonna be birthed in a new body. Production, renewal, renewal of the what? Flesh. You're gonna come and renew you're gonna come and renew flesh as a baby. Recreation, regeneration, you see. All right. Uh, so that's what regeneration is. It's the new birth of a spirit through the flesh, through a renewal of the flesh. So you're going to come back, your spirit's going to come back to the earth. Which, like it says in Ecclesiastes, I saw under heaven the place of judgment, which is the earth. You're going to come back on the earth to play out your judgment. Alright. Let's, uh, let's see. Alright. Let me uh, go back. Let's go back. So that's what regeneration is. You see? And you can read the verse above that to get more context. Matthew 19 and 27. The disciples reward, you see, and answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all 
and followed thee, what shall we have? Therefore, what shall we get? And he told them, which I read, which I just read this, in the regeneration, which means when you come back in new flesh, you shall also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes, you see? So they're going to come back in new bodies. You see? All right, let's get another example of regeneration. Let's go and get another verse. Now this is uh, Matthew 11. I'm going to start at... Uh, let's see... 11 and 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, and if you will receive it, this is Elias, which is Elijah, which was for to come. You see? So Elijah came back as John the Baptist in the what? Regeneration. He came back in new flesh. All right, let's see. Let's get another uh, scripture, another precept. All right. Matthew 17. Let's start at, uh, let's start at 10, Matthew 17 and 10. And his disciples answered, asked him, saying, why then say that the scribes, why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Elijah, I mean, Elias, which is Elijah, truly show first come and restore all things but I say unto you that Elijah is come already and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall the, also the son of man suffer of them then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist you see so the spirits of the prophets are subject unto the prophets which I read earlier which means if you were a prophet in your whole life, you're going to come back as a prophet. And that goes with every spirit. If you were a spirit doing this or that in your past life, you're going to come back, you know, doing the same thing. That's what you call a lot. You're going to come back in your lot. All right. Let's go. Get another scripture. Proving that Solomon was really your shy. All right. Let's see. And your shy when he came... When uh, Solomon came back as Yahweh Shai, who people ignorantly called Jesus Christ, what did he do? He was sinless, right? So, if Solomon sinned, by what? Allowing those, his, his wives, to turn his heart away, you know, unto serving their gods, when did Solomon pay for those sins? All right. He paid for them as Yahweh Shai. When he came back, you see, let's get an example. All right, let's see. You see, like it says right here, Nehemiah 13 and 26. Did, did not King Solomon sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all. Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause the sin, you see? So those so him worshiping the other gods, you know, worshiping false gods, you know, through those women, they caused him to, to sin, you see? But when he paid for those sins, when he came back as Yahweh Shai, let's get another precept. Alright, let's see. Solomon, all right, let's see, let's read this as a precept, we want to, you know, first prove with these precepts that uh, King Solomon was Yahweh Shai, and that he paid for his sins, that Solomon paid for his sins through Yahweh Shai, because he was Yahweh Shai, all right, let's read this, First Kings 1 and 45, and Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet had anointed him king in Gahan, and they are come up from thence rejoicing. So that the king, so that the city rang, rang again. This is the noise that ye have heard. And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. And moreover, the king's servant came to bless our Lord King David, saying, God maketh the name of Solomon better than thy name, and maketh him's throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself 
upon the bed. You see, he bowed before who? Yahweh Shai. And thus, and also thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which have given one to sit on my throne this day, my eyes even seeing it. You see? Let's get another precept. What King David said, let's see. The Lord said unto my Lord. Alright, let's get this. You see? Because King David knew that. Let's see. I think it's, I said at that right hand. Sit at the right hand. You see, because King David, he knew that Solomon, his son, was was the son of God, which was Yahweh Shai. All right, this is in Psalms 110, which is a psalm, a psalm of David, a song of David. Psalms 110 and verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, you see, sit thou on thy right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool, you see. So who was King David's Lord? You know, Lord unto the Most High. You see, the Most High said unto my Lord, which was who? The, pre the verse I just read previous, which is showed that what King David had bowed to Solomon, see? Solomon was Yahweh Shai, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Now let's get an example of Yahweh Shai saying, you know, posing a question to the Pharisees. This is another precept. Here we go, Matthew 22 and 43. All right, let's start at uh, Matthew 22 and 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahweh Shai asked them, saying, What ye think of, 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 of the Hamashiach? Whose son is he? They said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then do a David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, You see, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool, you see. <laughs> so Yahweh Shah, he knew that he was he was the Son of God. He was David's Lord under the Most High, showing you that they were the same spirit, the same person. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forward ask him any more questions. See? See? So even yet, only a Howard Shai knew it, you know, what the answer was to that question. But that was showing you that they were the same person. Now let's go prove that your Howard Shai came back. And pay for his sins. I mean, that Solomon came back and paid for his sins as, as Yahweh Shah. All right, let's see. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. All right, I read that. All right, regeneration. Okay, all right. All right, Elijah. Yep, Elijah. All right, did I read this? Yep, truly Elijah had already come. And they spoke of John the Baptist, but I'll read it again just to make sure. Now, this is proving that Elijah came back as, well, John the Baptist came back as Elijah, you see? All right, the disciples asked, asked him, saying, Why then say the scribe? Oh, yeah, I read this. Yeah, I read this. Okay. Yep, because then it goes and say, He had already come. Then it's John the Baptist. All right, let's see. All right, let's keep going. All right, Solomon sent by these things. I read that. All right, I'm just going over the stuff that I've read. All right, let's see. Matthew 22, all right, let's see. All right, here we go. First, uh, 2 Samuel 7 and 14. Let's go up a little bit. Now, this is, uh, I think, Nathan the prophet talking to King David, telling him about 
you know, the destiny of Solomon. Let's see. Let's start at uh, 2 Samuel 7 and 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. You see? Solomon's kingdom only lasts 40 years. So who is this talking about? The son of God, Yahushai. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chastise him with the rod of man and with the stripes of the children of man. You see? You know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a part two, and we're going to discuss right here where it says, I will chastise him with the rod of man and with the stripes of the children of man. We're going to go to even a further breakdown. So I'm going to stop it right here. I'm going to do a part two. A regeneration part two. You know. All right. I'm going to go out praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, Rikakadash. The bonus to the elders and the apostles, great millstones, salutations to the elect out there, wherever you may be. Shalom. Okay.